So, so we are discussing about genetic algorithm and we have discussed about that two biological process namely genetics and evolution how they can be used to solve optimization problem in the form of evolutionary algorithm called the genetic algorithm. And based on this concept we can define the G A as a population based random search. This means from one population to another population we have to search for the best solution. So, it is called the population based probabilistic search and that is used to solve optimization problem and such a population based probability search is based on the concept of natural genetics and then natural evolution. So, today we will discuss about details about it. So, what does a population means and then the random search how it can be carried out by means of the genetics and then natural selection or evolution. So, the algorithm follows a framework which is shown here and in this framework we see three basic building blocks. The first is the called the population and then is the selection and then reproduction and then these are the basically control to process I mean towards this one. So, this basically eventually is a searching process is a searching process and is a probabilistic searching process actually. Now, here few things are important the population, the selection and then reproduction. So, the selection is basically follows the concept of evolution proposed by Charles Darwin and reproduction is the concept it is basically the concept of genetics proposed by Gregor Johann Mondel. So, they basically the idea that is their idea is basically how from a current population initially it is initial population the process can be moved. So, that it can gives a new population here and then it can iterate the same thing until we can have the search complete this is called the converge and finally, we get the solution it is called the optimum solution. So, essentially it is basically starting to this one we have to obtain from here, but by means of this process this process so long the conversion is complete and we can get it. So, the idea it is uh, like this and this kind of concept it is basically the genetic algorithm concept and this is the basic framework of the G A. And here one thing that population here is basically is an individual and this population can be linked to is a solution or in other words a population or an individual belongs to a population basically is a possible solution. Now, this is very important and individual in this population is basically is a possible solution these three things are very important. So, somehow if we can represent a possible solution by means of an individual and a number of individual is selected and then it gives a generation or uh, that is called a population and from this generation if we follow this selection and reproduction operation. So, that we can get another population or another generation then and this another generation is significant in terms of the improved solution. So, if it gives a solution and it gives another population which consists of improved solution then if we iterate this one and then by this iteration iterative process we can get from one solution to more improved solution and we can stop this searching if we satisfy some convergence criteria. That means, when we have to stop this uh, seemingly is basically the infinite loop. So, this process is basically followed in genetic algorithm and to understand the genetic algorithm we have to understand how this initial population can be generated. That means, a possible solution can be converted to an individual 
and then how the selection and then how reproduction operation can be carried out or can be realized. We will learn all these things in the subsequent lectures one by one. First we will discuss about this framework, the framework of G A and it is uh, variation. So, in this lecture we will limit our discussion to that only, it will help us to understand the concept further and then later on we will discuss the other concept. So, let us proceed here. So, as we have learnt it, the genetic algorithm works as an iterative process and in this iteration it basically pursue the searching, searching for the best solution and this working cycle is basically continued with certain convergence criteria that means, whether you have to continue or you have to continue the search or you have to stop it. Now, one important thing is that solution that it ultimately gives here, this solution not necessarily to be guaranteed, but it can give near optimum solution. So, near optimum solution is sometimes called the local optima and then guaranteed optimum solution is called the global optimum. So, there are minima as I told you and then out of this minimum, the global minimum is the guaranteed solution, but sometimes genetic algorithm can converge into a local optima and that local optima may be sufficient to find the optimum solution which cannot be solved using traditional approach to find this one. So, genetic algorithm essentially does not give you the correct solution always, but is a near uh, correct solution actually. Now, this is the concept of genetic algorithm that is followed there and I just want to detailize it the different steps involved namely the solution generation and then the selection operation, the reproduction operation and all these things that is there in this framework. So, we have to start it whenever we start with that means, uh, we have certain random solution at our hand. So, the random solution basically gives a initial population. Now, in order to have this random solution, we have to have full idea about the different parameters which are involved in this optimization problem. And then all these parameters are to be taken into account and they should be represented in some form for which the GFM or can handle them. So, it is called the parameter representation. Once the parameters are identified, and then parameters are represented precisely, then with the help of this representation we can generate the population, population means random solution. So, initially if we generate a population such a population is called initial population. Once the initial population is observed, we have to check about whether the initial population already got the optimum result or not that means, the best solution or not. If it is yes, then definitely we can stop this process that means, our work is done. If it is not, then we have to go to the next population generation. Now, so for the next population generation is concerned, it basically needs two tasks. These tasks are related to selection and then reproduction. Now, so far these two tasks is concerned, it basically evaluate the fitness of a solution that means, how solution is good. So, that is basically evaluation and now whenever this evaluation is there, so it basically consider some cost function. We will learn about that how to evaluate a solution or how to evaluate an individual in the population, so that its fitness value can be calculated. So, these are the theory are there, we will follow the theory and then based on the evaluate, we have to select the mate, mating pool that means, out of the individual who can be responsible for the mating process, so that they can produce next offspring. So, that there is a select mating, there is an there is an again there is a theorem by which from this fitness evaluation value we can select the mate. Once the mating is done that means, the mating pool is created that means, this individual will mate with other individual and so on so on. So, this mating pool will undergo reproduction scheme. Now, reproduction is a uh, there are some few steps the reproduction crossover, reproduction by means of mutation, reproduction by means of inversion. So, this reproduction in fact produce from a mating pair 
to another individual. So, successfully there are a set of mating pairs from the each mating pairs we can obtain one or more results or it is called the offspring. So, these offspring produce the next generation. So, next generation will be here again the next generation will be tested whether the next generation achieve the best result or not. If yes we will stop it here if no we can re repeat the same procedure until this convergence criteria is successful. So, in genetic algorithm few things are important how to create a new population and then how the selection can be done selection by means of evolution evaluation and then mating pool generation and once it is there then how to go do the reproduction that means, how the crossover mutation and inversion can be carried out. So, that next population can be obtained and for each population we have to check the convergence. So, this is the one important task this is second this is third and finally, convergence. So, learning a genetic algorithm in fact, learning these four tasks in details. So, we will learn all these four tasks in details and then finally, we will see how given an optimization problem we can solve this problem using genetic algorithm. Now, we will discuss about few things here for the optimization problem we have to consider few things first given an optimization problem means we have given an objective function objective function in fact defined in terms of some input parameters basically with the these are the parameters whose values decides the value of the objective function. And as I mentioned already an optimization problem is specified by means of objective function and then a constant set of constants. The constants are basically the requirement by which all these values should satisfy so that the optimization function will get its value. And so, input parameters are involved there. So, input parameters are basically the input values to the system and then the fitness evaluation and for every solution we have to calculate some fitness value. That means, if say suppose solution is the optimum solution one or global solution one then it should have the highest fitness value. If it is very far from the global optimum then it fitness value is also very far from the optimum fitness values. Now, in order to represents a solution in the form of a genetic algorithms individual then we have to follow encoding. Encoding means how the parameters can be represented so that it leads to a chromosome. Chromosome is the basic concept that is there in the genetic. So, encoding is nothing but representation of chromosome for a solution and one solution we can consider an individual. So, chromosome is basically decide an individual then. Now, chromosome is basically encoded form that means, some symbolic representation. So, we have to follow decoding. So, that from this symbolic representation we can get the actual value. So, in other words a parameters that is there we have to encode it. So, that the chromosome can be represented this chromosome defined the individuals solution or population and for many solutions the many chromosomes and then many what is called the individuals and then population is generation. Now, encoding is basically a process by which a chromosome can be obtained for a given problems or in terms of input parameters how the encoding can be done. So, that input parameters can be converted into the encoded form and decoding is basically the reverse form of the encoding. Now, so these are the optimization problem solving approach with G A and so far the G A operation is concerned. Those are the operations that we have mentioned is carried out by means of called the operators. Those operators are basically the functions like so for example, encoding, convergence, mating pool, fitness evolution, crossover, mutation, inversion these are called operators these are basically the functions like. So, if we give an input this function will produce an output that means, if encoding is concerned it basically represents a solution or that chromosome for a given input parameter or set of parameters. Now, convergence is basically if we get a population 
or a generation it will check whether we have reached to the termination condition or not. That means, we have to stop it or we have to continue the process of the genetic algorithm. Then mating pool is basically given a population we have to create the mating pool. So, mating pool is a function or it is an operator by which input is a population and it produce the output as the pools mating pool. Similarly, fitness evaluation it is also a function input to this function is basically an individual it will return a result giving the fitness value of that individual or solution. Crossover is basically if we pass two chromosomes to this operator it will produce two or more offspring. So, basically the crossover is an operator. Inversion is basically to jump from one optimum value to another optimum value how it can be done. So, if we give a population here it will produce another new population that can leads to a better optimum value like. So, these are the operators. So, learning G A is basically learning all these operators. So, we will discuss about how these operators can be realized in terms of some simple uh, problem. Now, before going to actual learning about the different operators, there are few what is called the strategies for the G A. One is called simple G A, it is also called simple genetic algorithm and another is called the steady state G A or steady state genetic algorithm and alternative to these two G A strategies there is also one called messy genetic algorithm. In this lecture we will only discuss our uh, we will limit our discussion to the first two then SGA and SSGA steady simple genetic algorithm and steady state genetic algorithm these are the most widely uh, followed strategies so far the genetic algorithm is concerned. Once we learn these two strategies we will be able to learn the genetic algorithm later on in terms of their different operators. So, let us first start with the simple genetic algorithm it is called the SGA and this architecture this block diagram or flow chart shows how the simple genetic algorithm works. We may note that this simple genetic algorithm is basically a little bit detailization of the genetic algorithm framework that we have already learned and that means, the different researchers follow the different uh, uh, way to solve the genetic algorithm they just uh, do certain different uh, follow certain different strategies. So, we will discuss about the strategy that is followed there in simple genetic algorithm. Now, we will just step by step here. Uh, so, first the start is obviously the starting point of any process and then the initial population creation. Now, here one parameter called the G A parameter first followed. So, initial population means it is a collection of solutions random solutions. Now, whenever we say the collection of random solution then what is the size? So, it is the programmer who decides the size let n be the number n may be sometimes 100 some user may follow n as a 1000. So, obviously, if we follow large values of n may be that we can come into the quick the solution or better solution, but at the cost of more timing. So, if we take the population size less that means, value of n is small then we may come quickly terminate the solution, but it may not give you the correct result always. So, is a trade off of course, there. So, in this in this strategy population size is an important parameters. So, simple j g a consider a good value of n the n is the first g a parameter genetic algorithm parameter. Now, once the population is population size is decided and following some procedure of creating the random solution as the initial population. The next task in according to the simple G A is basically evaluate each individual. So, it is called the evaluation that evaluation means the fitness evaluation. So, it basically for each an individual solution in this current population the operator or function evaluate will evaluate the fitness value. So, that is called the evaluation. So, this is the second step and then after the evaluation of individual solutions are known it basically come to the convergence criteria checking. For each individual it will check that whether say suppose we know that the highest fitness value is possible for a solution is this one. If any individual have this highest fitness value then we can say that we can achieve the convergence criteria. So, we can stop it there. Now, if convergence criteria satisfied we can say yes 
and return the individuals with the best fitness value and that is the solution. So, this basically the solution. Now, if this conversion criteria is not satisfied, then we have to go to the next step. The next step is basically select n p is another parameter in simple g a n p, n p denotes the subset of this value of n, n may be say 500 and n p may be say 20 percent of 500 may be say 100. So, select 100 individuals from these individuals. So, this is the subset selection and this basically allow with repetition. Now, whenever it is repetition we can select here basically how we can select. So, with repetition is allowed that means, we can select at random. So, we select one return to the individual again select return the same individual and so on so on. If we proceed if we follow the same procedure for n p times. So, it will gives n p individual selection from this population with repetition. So, this is the idea and we can select it at a random fashion randomly we can choose one and then select and then being into the end this pool then next again this one and so on so on. So, n p individuals will be selected and with repetition that means, same individual may be selected one or more times here. So, this algorithm allow this one to select one individual more than one time. Now, this select again there are certain heuristics or some principle or policy to be followed. We will discuss about what the policy that needs to be followed in order to realize the selection operation. Next once the n p individuals a subset of this set is selected our next procedure is this is basically the selection algorithm that is there. So, selection operation and I told you that selection operation is based on the concept of evolution which basically has the four premises heredity, diversity and then uh, ranking and then selection. Anyway those things will be discussed again when we will discuss the selection procedure in details and next whenever the sele NP individuals are selected they create mating pool and here again mating pool should be created randomly. So, these are the different individual if it is there. So, randomly this one and this one. So, one mating pool. So, this one and this one one mating pool, this one this one another mating pool, this one this one mating pool. So, this way we can randomly select certain pairs and these pairs gives you the mating pool. So, you can create mating pool is basically random process. So, this is also random process, this is also random process, here also initial population generation random process that is why genetic algorithm is called the probabilistic search random search. Now, once the random randomly those uh, mating pool is uh, selected then for each individual there is a chromosome. So, from this they are haploid and then from a haploid so crossover and then diploid will be created. So, this basically concept the crossover it is applied here uh, in this uh, algorithm and then reproduction is there and mutation is basically is the another approach it is also in nature say that all of a sudden sub chromosome is there there is a some breaking in the code or DNA code like or genetic code. So, all of a sudden drastic change or some changes in the genetic code it basically called the mu mutation and inversion is basically I mean mutation is a very minor changes whereas, inversion is a very detailed changes. So, the detail changes is called inversion. So, so, what will happen is, so if the two I mean chromosomes from their offspring is created, this offspring undergo mutation, it is not necessary mutation should go or not go with certain probability and then inversion, then finally, it will give the new offspring. So, this new offspring will be stored into the new population or new generation and then all these new generation that has been obtained, then these basically out of this N p. So, certain number of new offspring will be generated. So, here according this simple GA replace all these new individual that obtained in the last generation with new offspring created. So, we have selected out of N, N p those N p will be replaced by the new offspring. So, it will remain the same size. So, here basically N and then N p. So, these N p will produce new N p and then new NP will be replaced by the old NP. So, the population size will be N and then new population the next generation will be there. So, this is the idea of the simple GA and 
so next idea is other than simple GA it is called the ok. So, so far the simple GA is concerned few things are important. Uh, so, as I told you see in the simple GA few parameters n this is the initial size of the or size of the population n p is basically size of the mating pool it basically p percentage of n p may be uh, some value decided by the programmer all these n p these are the value decided by the programmer who will use this genetic algorithm to solve their problem. And other than these parameters few other parameters are also involved these are all the convergence threshold that means, it is basically the range by which we can take. So, that our result is near optimal or near uh, uh, minimum or maximum and then few other parameters are there. So, these are called mutation parameters inversion parameters and crossing over parameters. So, we will discuss about all these parameters when we will discuss all these operation one by one. So, till time we can keep it on hold. Now, let us see the other algorithm that is there. So, to discuss about it. Now, there are few important features in SGA mean in which situation we should follow the simple genetic algorithm. So, simple genetic algorithm always produce overlapping generation that means, only fraction of individuals are replaced that means, from the current generation to the next generation few individuals are remains common. So, it is called the overlapping uh, generation overlapping generation. So, this is the one characteristic because some pop, some solutions are common in between the two successive generation and this simple G A is usually computational expressing compared to the other G A strategies and this kind of G A is applicable when initial population size is large. This general usually gives better results compared to the other strategies and here in this algorithm selection is biased towards the more highly fit individuals that means, it basically selects those individual which are having the highest fitness value, but it is observed that sometimes selecting non highest fit individual value and then taking the crossover can leads to a better solution. So, this has the one uh, what is called the uh, issues are here. So, that highly fit individual selection not always useful rather if we select some uh, other individual having the lower fitness value may give the better result or may give quick result. Anyway, so these are the another thing and these are the best individual may appear in any iteration that means, it can give the best result in any uh, iteration and uh, then that can be one achievement or that is good point. So, that we can terminate quickly if you are lucky enough then with one iteration may be you can terminate, but if you are not then you have to repeat it again. But the chance that it will terminate very quickly uh, higher compared to the other strategies. Now, so far the other strategy is concerned we will discuss about next strategy and then we will decide uh, we can understand about what is the difference between SGA versus this strategy. Now, the next strategy is called steady state genetic algorithm. Now, let us understand what is the strategy it is as in the simple genetic algorithm it will start with the initial population size n, n is decided by the programmer evaluate each individual that is the fitness evaluation. Now, here there are actually n p number of selection in case of SGA but this SSG only select two individuals. Now, these two individuals on selected they then go for the reproduction that means, we do not have to do the mating pool creation here unlike in case of SGA no need. So, from the two individuals will be selected from the current population and then they will produce the offspring. Now, here again go to that reject the offspring if it is duplicate. Now, the offspring that will be produced if we see it is already there in this population then we should reject this offspring. Then we can repeat another individual selection from here and then another offspring can be created. So, if it creates a new offspring, if it create a new offspring which is not repeated or not available already there then we can go if it is no. So, evaluate the offspring that means, the fitness value of the offspring will be created but in this case only one evaluation is required. Now, here after the fitness value is created if the offspring are better than the worst individual. So, in this population there are few individuals whose fitness value is worst. 
So, if the current off swing fitness value is improved value comp or that is the fitness value is greater than the any worst individual's fitness value, then we should replace this worst individuals by this new individuals, new offspring. That means, it in each iteration it will replace one of offspring with worth witness value by a better witness value. After replacing it will produce the uh, next generation, but in the next generation you will can see only one offspring is different. Anyway, so if the next generation satisfy the convergence criteria then we can stop and then these are the solutions. So, here you can see the solution having the highest business value is the ultimate solution. If it is it does not satisfy the convergence criteria you can go it again proceed the same procedure select two individuals. So, it is basically the root. So, the iteration will be there. Now, we can understand the difference between SGA and SSGA. SSGA always selects in each iteration or changes the population with a larger gap. That means, gap is at least by n p, but in this case the gap is very small only the two successive population is differed by means of only one two solutions. So, this is the fundamental difference that we can easily understand and here is the some features. So, for the SSG is concerned as I told you generation gap is small only two offsprings are produced in one generation. It is applicable usually when the population size is small chromosomes are of longer width and evaluation operation is less computationally expensive. That means, when the evaluation is too much con expensive to, uh, to calculate the fitness value of an individual then we can follow it. And chromosome length is basically if the solution needs a large number of parameters then you easily we can follow this technique. Okay, so, we have learned about SSGA and limitation in SSGA is that uh, compared to the SG of course, there is a chance of stuck at local optima if crossover mutation or inversion is not followed properly. Premature convergence usually occurs which is not occur generally in case of SGA and it is subject to stagnation that means, inferiors are neglected or removed and keeps making more trials for very long period of time. So, sometimes it is observed that if the inferior individuals are taking into the meeting they can leads to the better solution. So, but it is ignored here. So, it may come to a stagnation situation. Okay, so, we have learned about uh, SGA and then SSGA the two strategies and based on these two strategies how the genetic algorithm can work and then in order to understand the working of genetic algorithm we have to study about the different operators. So, in our subsequent lectures we will learn about the different operators that is there namely encoding, the crossover, mutation, the selection, fitness evolution and all these things. Okay, thank you.